Next, I will show how to apply the one proportion Z procedure, but let's discuss its development first. In one mean Z and T procedures, we estimate the unknown population mean by constructing a confidence interval around the sample mean. But we can estimate other unknown parameters as well. Next, we will discuss a procedure to estimate the unknown population proportion. To construct the confidence interval for the population mean, we use the central limit theorem for sample means. Similarly, we can use the central limit theorem for sample proportions to construct a confidence interval for a population proportion. Next, we are going to briefly go over the reasoning behind the procedure. By central limit theorem, p hat is normally distributed with mean p and standard deviation given by this formula. Therefore, for p hat, the following must be true. The probability of p hat being within z alpha over 2 standard deviations away from the mean is equal to 1 minus alpha. By plugging in the values into these expressions, we can obtain the following probability statement, which can be interpreted that we are 1 minus alpha times 100% confident that P, the population proportion, is within Z alpha standard deviations away from P hat. In other words, we are 1 minus alpha times 100% confident that P is between Pi hat minus Z alpha over 2 standard deviations and Pi hat plus Z alpha over 2 standard deviations. Similarly to the other procedures, it appears that it is reasonable to build the confidence interval around the sample proportion, pi hat, at the center with the margin of error z alpha over 2 times the standard deviation. However, the estimate for the unknown value p cannot depend on itself. Therefore, we cannot use z alpha over 2 times the standard deviation to calculate the margin of error. As in one mean t procedure, where we replace the unknown sigma with s, we are going to replace the unknown p with p hat. Thus, the formula to approximate the margin of error is simply the following. As a result, the following template will be used to construct and interpret the confidence interval for population proportion. For the procedure to work, the following assumptions must be made. The sample is simple random, and the central limit theorem for proportions must be applicable. That is, the number of positive responses and negative responses, both must be greater than 10. Let's say we want to construct a confidence interval with the margin of error no more than some value. How big we should choose the sample size? By solving the following inequality for margin of error, we obtain the following solution for the sample size. Note that the right-hand side of this inequality contains the unknown value of the parameter p, which makes the formula useless. Good news is that while p is unknown, 
the following inequality is true for any value of p. So that the following inequality holds. Thus, we can guarantee the desired margin of error by choosing the sample size to be greater than the following expression. Consider the following example. The ABC News Ipsos poll was conducted by Ipsos Public Affairs Knowledge Panel on March 18, 19, 2020 in English and Spanish among a random national sample of 512 adults. In the poll, 282 Americans approve of the president's management of the crisis. Construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of the Americans that approve of the president's management of the crisis. First, let's check if all necessary assumptions are satisfied. The sample is simple random. Check. The number of positive responses is 282, which is greater than 10. And the number of negative responses is 230, which is also greater than 10. So the central limit theorem applies. Check. Also, note that the sample proportion pi hat is equal to 282 divided by 512, which is 55.08%. Once the assumptions are verified, we may apply the procedure. We will use the following template to construct and interpret the confidence interval. The unknown parameter in this problem is P, the approval rating. The point estimate is the sample proportion PI had, which we found to be equal to 0 0.5508. How confident are we that the point estimate is equal to exactly the unknown parameter? We are 0% confident. So the new confidence level that we have set in the problem is 90%. To achieve such confidence level, we have to set alpha equal to 0 0.1, so that 1 minus alpha times 100% is equal to 90%, the confidence level. Next, alpha over 2 is 0 0.05. And the critical value z alpha over 2 is z 0 0.05, which is equal to 1.65. We can find the margin of error using the formula. So it becomes 0 0.0363. Now we can find the lower bound by subtracting 0 0.0363 from 0 0.5508 and get 0 0.5145 and we can also get the upper bound by adding 0 0.0363 to 0 0.5508 to get 0 0.5871. Now we can interpret the results. We are 90% confident that the approval rating is between 51.45% and 58.71%. In addition, we may also answer the following question. How large the sample must be so that the margin of error is less than 2.5%. To answer the question in part B, we will use the formula n is greater than 
the square of z alpha over 2 divided by 2 times the desired margin of error in which we can plug in all the values to get 1089 which must be rounded up to 1090 to guarantee the accuracy 1090 is the smallest sample size for which the margin of error will be less than two and a half percent for a 90 percent confidence interval I just showed how to apply the one proportion Z procedure to construct a confidence interval with a certain level of confidence and how to determine the sample size to achieve a certain level of accuracy.